Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm flying from Hong Kong to Manila in a 747-100, the default 747-100, but with a Pan Am livery, which looks like this. Um, there is a fairly large livery pack available at xplane.org and uh, fairly detailed liveries are available for this plane. Unfortunately the cockpit uh, seems to be the glass cockpit rather than the, the dials, I like the analog sort of thing. Um, but we have some other problems that I'm a little bit worried about. Now, for a TU-154, uh, we didn't have to worry about pressurization, that was fine. But this is the default plane, and I know the default planes do have pressurization. The problem is, um, I don't know how to select it. I see cabin altitude control. Generally, for the Boeings, it's over on this side, the whole cabin altitude thing. It's usually somewhere over here, and uh, you know there is a cabin altitude control there, but I can't manipulate it. And I don't know, I can't even click that passenger oxygen. I know you can't see my cursor, but I'm clicking on passenger oxygen, that lid, and I can't click on it to change it. Uh, so that's one worry. A second worry is that we have a hydraulic system fault on engine 4. I don't even know if this is all started up properly to be honest um normally for a cockpit you know it's all good if if lights are out <laughs> basically is is what you want and if lights are on that's usually a concern i don't see any way of setting the cabin altitude and i know i've had this problem with this plane before so yeah <laughs> basically that is that is our situation here. We'll try and make the flight anyway, but I'm anticipating that we're going to have a pressurization problem inside. Um, oh, wait, there's a cabin altitude thing here. Um, let me see if I can set that with the keyboard control, which is control uh, all control p That's landing altitude. Um, no, I want the cabin altitude. Okay. I thought it was cabin vertical speed. Cabin altitude. See, it's cabin altitude up. I looked it up already, obviously. Um, it says cabin altitude up and down is those. I want all the controls. There was a pressurization section, it seemed like, but it doesn't seem visible here. Flight controls, pressurization, lead air, air conditioning, GPU. See, I mean, Cabin vertical speed up and down. Well, maybe we can um, Alt Control O. Something's got to work. Alt Control K. Uh, dump pressurization on. I don't know what that means. Pressurization test. I mean, it seems like it should be cabin altitude up and down, right? But that seems to be changing this landing altitude. Okay, this changes... That also changes the landing altitude, that doesn't... Ten thousand. Yeah, I mean, nothing seems to be... I mean, something seems to be coded wrong, <laughs> I'll have to say. So... Um, we don't really need the landing altitude to be that high. I'll set to 6,000 as a safe medium, I guess. I don't know why the... There's a lot of stuff that's weird here. Like, the... Um, I'm not using the autopilot for these flights, but... Why it's set to 50,000 is beyond me. As a start. Sorry for taking long on this, but it's just vexing. One of the challenges for these lights, let me get started. Let me get started. And we're continuing with the Apollo 13 audio. They're on day two, and they're in the middle of a TV uh, program, the TV transmission. So I'm going to press play, and then I'll talk about things. Oh, it doesn't want to press play. I'll have to restart that. Okay, so one of the things... The challenge of all this around the world in a planes thing 
is adjusting from one plane to another because that's in some cases from one program to another because I also do DCS World X, uh, KSP Kerbal Space Program I mean and other things so jumping from like the SR-71 to the EV-55 is one of those little challenges that here we go for the audio and dealing with peculiarities right. of each plane Sometimes I haven't even flown them before. This, of course, I have flown before. We are not very heavily loaded at all. It's only an hour-long flight, so it's not carrying its full fuel load. We'll get another flight over Hong Kong. And that's very much on our way to Manila anyway. Let's throw back. Okay, uh, we have somebody upside down in the photograph there now. Realizing, of course, in, uh, in space, uh, there is no really right side up or upside down. It still looks that way to us. Okay, that's, uh, that's uh, Fred now. I'm trying to put him right side up before you flip back there uh, in the space station. Fred, would you move your uh, hands there so the back up with you? Okay, that's coming in uh, real clear, Jim. We see Fred in the sleeper thing, restraint. As a matter of fact, man, I find my I find Fred down there all the time. Yeah, uh, I, I can see he, he appreciates that. I chose the Pan Am livery for sentimental reasons, but also it just sort of looks good over Hong Kong, in a way. Looks like uh, there's a lot of room down there, considering all the boxes on the floor underneath the couch. Well, we're going yeah, a little bit fast a for the south too. You know, with the uh, Icon camera box down. And right now I'm going to bring the camera back up. Okay, uh, Vance, uh, there's no one point to see right now. We'll, uh, we'll terminate our whole TV for you today. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate it seeing in the, uh, thing. Bye. I swear uh, the TV broadcasts from Apollo 13 are shorter than for, from the other two missions that we've... Hours, well, minutes. Apollo 11 and Apollo 12. We've completed the change of shift here in Mission Control. Flight Director Milton Wendler has replaced Flight Director Glenn Lunny. Our capsule communicator will continue to be astronaut Vance Brand. The change of shift press conference is scheduled to begin shortly in the MSC News Center Auditorium. Participants will be Glenn Lunny, Flight Director, and uh, astronaut Tony England. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Okay, at your convenience, uh, we have an item to give you which will have to be copied. It's uh, information on how to Photograph Comet Bennett at time 32 hours GET. Over. Okay, stand by one minute.
Well, this is about the limit of altitude without pressurization. Maneuver to following. Um, looks like the cabin altitude is going. Oh, but that's it's not supposed to go up, right? Um, hold on, hold on. Yeah, we're losing. Okay, let me try and keep it down here. High gain antenna angles will be pitch minus two three. Yaw nine three. Use normal PTC procedures uh -oh. to dampen rates. I don't know. I don't know what would be best. That was in the cabin altitude setting. That was After saying what the cabin stable. altitude was. But since what I was manipulating was only setting the landing altitude, I don't know what it's supposed to do. Take photographs of and I don't planet. see any way of manipulating the cabin altitude setting. Keeping it at low altitude is not going to get Use us there very quickly. On the sextant. With magazine G. We certainly have the fuel and everything, but I don't think it's the best that deal. <clears throat> very high speed black and white film. Right. I think I'll just go for a, a higher That's altitude the, uh, dim light film. and hope for the best. Take three photos. One each at five, twenty. Oh, another view of Hong Kong there. And sixty seconds time exposure. Use auto optics. Now eight eight values are R one. Uh, Plus we seem to be... Okay. Three, four, seven, I was worried about how seven. badly we were accelerating, but now it's picking up again. R2. Minus zero, eight, zero, two, eight. R3. I'm not going to have the internal instruments to Plus help me. Three, five, zero, seven, five. So, that's got to be annoying. Take three photos. But yeah, if anybody knows what I'm getting wrong here, please tell me. I um, might be missing 20, the control or something. 60 second time exposure. Using manual optics. The acceleration and climb rate seems weird. Zero, zero, zero point eight degrees. Trunnion. 12.5 degrees. Comment. Don't tell me it like needed the ice on and it didn't Step have that on at startup. Frames, uh, that is or something. Two seconds of, of at 24 feet per second before the first frame and after the last frame of the photos. That is uh, two second, two seconds at 24 frames per second before the first frame and after the last frame of photos. Uh, is that it, man? And that's all. Okay, uh, the time uh, is uh, event will be at 3200. Uh, and uh, we're to maneuver to... Uh, okay, well, I'll try and treat it gently. Well, without any right, land eight, under eight, us eight, for this eight, flight, eight, it would have been nice to have some more clouds, eight, but eight, here we are. And uh, we're to uh, use normal PTC uh, procedures to damp the rate. And after damping the rates at a four spin up, we're to uh, put the DAC on the sextant with the magazine G, very high speed uh, black and white film. Then uh, we're to take three photos, one each at five, twenty, and sixty seconds time exposure using audio, auto optics. Uh, down 88 values, R1 uh, plus 34717.
This is Apollo Control at 31 hours, 13 minutes. We understand the change of shift press conference is ready to begin in the MSC News Center Auditorium. Uh, during the uh, press conference, we'll be recording any conversations with the crew for playback uh, immediately following the change of shift briefing. Uh, we might also add at this point that uh, during the television transmission, which lasted a total of 50 minutes, 41 seconds. 50 minutes? Among the viewers in the viewing room. Didn't seem that control, long. But I was flying at the time. Fred Hayes wife Mary and his three children, Mary, Frederick, and Stephen. At uh, 31 hours 14 minutes, this is Apollo Control Houston. The, of course, I'm cutting out silences, so if uh, all they're doing is showing stuff instead of talking, then that'll be cut out. This is Apollo Control at 31 hours 34 minutes. During the change of shift briefing, Flight Director Milton Wendler has been in the process of reviewing the mission status with each of his flight controllers. Uh, we've also had uh, uh, some conversations with the spacecraft. Uh, Vance Brand has given the crew uh, the instructions for photographing the Comet Bennett at uh, 32 hours. This will be done using the data acquisition camera, a 16 millimeter data camera on board the spacecraft. And at this time, Jack Swigert is in the lower equipment bay doing a P-23 exercise, the mid-course uh, navigation using the onboard optical equipment and the onboard uh, computer and guidance system, updating the guidance system with onboard sightings of five stars. Uh, we'll play back the tape-recorded conversations that we have and uh, then stand by for live communications. Okay, 35,000 feet sounds good to me. star if you'd like to hear them the rest of the stars will we'll have to uh, give you in a couple of hours in order. go ahead okay the first star the corrected altitude 15 kilometers plus or minus four effective altitude 12 kilometers plus or minus seven okay i think that'll be good enough on the trim uh, as far as uh, sub stellar point the value is arc minutes, two arc minutes, and uh, that's very good. And like I said, we'll get back with you in a couple hours for the rest. Okay, we have 
several items here. Or not. Um, first is a reminder on the PTC that R1 uh, should be 375, uh, 0.375 degrees as last night to get 0.3 degree rotation rate. Second one. Okay, copy that. Clipper okay, Bald one. Eagle. At 32 hours, uh, looking at Bennett's Comet, uh, we want the pictures taken when the spacecraft is uh, as stable uh, as it's going to be before starting PTC. The stability requirement is, is very high. We weren't sure if you understood that from what we passed up. Uh, in addition, Photographs might not show as much as the eye can see of the comet, so if you see anything interesting about the mm -hmm. structure of the comet, why sketching it is in order, uh, is uh, in order and uh, is uh, encouraged. Over. Sketching is encouraged. Okay, Vince, uh, what we'll do is when we get to uh, attitude, we'll disable the quad and do like we did last night. We'll let uh, Guido and uh, you people down there tell us when you think we're stable enough. Then we'll, uh, we'll do all this work with the uh, uh, DAC on the sextant first, and then we'll put the, when we get that done, we'll go back and put the uh, sextant eyepiece back on and see what we can observe visually. Okay, that sounds good. So I don't know about poets, While but artists the, are definitely uh, encouraged. Stabilize, it might be interesting to have the eyepiece on and be looking at it visually. Of course, there are a number of famous astronaut turned artists, including uh, Alex Lilianov okay, and uh, Al Bean. SPS burn had no anomalies I think even whatsoever. Mike Collins took up art. Very good burn. Okay, very good. Uh, next item, request hydrogen tank one heater off for balancing purposes. And Apollo 13, another item. Uh, something that we have observed and you might be seeing is a uh, slight TCE fluctuation on fuel cell three. Uh, this fluctuation has been going from about 152 to 160 over a 37 been second up at period. a completely lower level, it, uh, has been seen on other flights in the past. No one is worried about it, but uh, the usual fluctuation is about one and a half degrees instead of the second, uh, or instead of seven seconds. So I thought you should be aware of it. Okay, uh, Lance, and one other uh, flight distinction. Uh, is uh, the uh, flow uh, hydrogen versus oxygen is not uh, exactly matched on fuel cell three either. Okay, we copy. And the last item, we'd like to send you an iRig update. So it's your convenience request, pull and accept. I don't know what the iRig is. Okay, we're reporting to the PAM. Okay. And why it needs to be updated. I mean, I know... Is it another inertial measurement thing? What, a ref, like a ref's mat or something? Roger, disabled. And uh, down here we see that your hydrogen and oxygen on the fuel cell are exactly matched, so we suspect it's uh, purely a spacecraft readout problem. Okay. Any problem with the hydrogen and oxygen readings, you know, very suggestive at this stage. At this time, the crew is in the process we of know stabilizing things. the spacecraft attitude. They do not. Eliminating all. I don't know what the little uh, fuzzy uh, business on the. Preparation for uh, I think. Up the uh, for the are those some like vertices related to the engine slow that are appearing through the wing? Seems that way. The data acquisition camera to the yeah, those are. 
that we'll you can see those little dots. Those are maybe it's this because of the smoke. I think it's the smoke emanation where the smoke is emanating and, uh, from. We can sort of see it through the wing for some reason. Oh, I'm going down again. And he's also been advised uh, if any uh, any particularly interesting features are noted <sighs> visually All these visual quirks. of the Comet Bennett that they should uh, attempt to sketch them. At the present time, Apollo they must 13 has 125,083 nautical miles from Earth. The spacecraft velocity is 4,571 feet per second. The fuel cell temperature flu uh, fluctuations, which were mentioned, are occurring in fuel cell number three. Uh, this is a temperature that's measured at the condenser exhaust at the point where the hydrogen Come on, plane, and, you can uh, stay stable. It's looking particularly good like this, the like the from bottom it. is especially the shiny. The two like fuel this. cells are remaining steady at about 157. Uh, when you're through the dip key, so we can uh, load down 88. Roger, we'll let you know, Jack. And as we were saying, the uh, two other fuel cells, fuel cell one and two, are remaining stable at a temperature of about 157 to 159 degrees. Fuel cells. Fuel cell three is fluctuating between about 152 and 160. Vance Brand advised the crew that uh, this will cause no problem, with the possible exception that it could trigger a uh, warning alarm uh, to them. But we have seen this sort of thing on previous flights, and uh, it uh, should I cause no problem. I think it's a problem. <laughs> I don't know. Apollo maybe it, maybe this really wasn't uh, related to the actual problem. Who knows? Well, definitely somebody knows. Maybe it is a problem. The guidance officer has just reported that the spacecraft appears to be uh, approaching a stable attitude. And we expect that uh, would be in a position shortly uh, for the crew to begin an attempt to photograph the uh, Bennett Comet. Go for the pictures. Okay, Vance, uh, we tried auto optics and couldn't pick it up there. We're pointing pretty much right into the sun and, and things are pretty well washed out. And I've gone to manual optics and I'm trying to get 0 0.8, 12.5 on the shaft of Trunion and I uh, still can't pick it up. So uh, it's very light in the section. So I, I kind of think maybe we're too near the sun to see it. That's right, Vance. Uh, the sextant is all, it's, uh, it's all milky, and it, uh, any uh, comet that could be seen through there is just going to be missed in the, in the background. Okay, uh, we copy that. Uh, we got some discussion. Uh, stand by. Let's get more of a skew here. I haven't, oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> uh, we're not looking into the sun. Wrong view. Let's it's ignore it's the dark cockpit for now. Okay, finally, I okay, feel Jack, like uh, we're trimmed understand. right, maybe? Just a uh, question. If you look through the telescope, can you uh, see the, the comet at all? Back. 
stand by. This is Apollo Control. You heard Jack Swigert advise and Jim Lovell confirm that uh, reflections of the sun off the lamb are apparently uh, washing out the sexton field of view and making it uh, impossible to get a view of the Bennett, uh, the comet Bennett. Uh, this problem is being discussed in mission control right now. Uh, Ken Mattingly, who is in the control center, and the flight, activity, like flight activities officer, and uh, Capcom Vance Brand, as well as astronaut Tony England, are uh, huddled around the flight director's console discussing the possibility of perhaps uh, seeking another spacecraft attitude that might avoid the reflection problem. It's drifting a little bit okay, further up. Yeah. I'm going to give it I one touch of elevator trim down. Black and white, uh, with, uh, the light coming into the section, you're going to get anything out of it. Okay, uh, unanimous opinion is that uh, uh, you're right, and uh, we'll scratch. Of course, one of the other challenges for these uh, flights is not stuff. using uh, autopilot and having way to out with the whole get trimmed out myself. More favorable after TEI. Over. Always a bit touchy. Sounds good. Uh, without the limb, we only have a better chance. Roger. Oh, well, that extra touchdown really messed things up, I think. Literally one and click down. 13, Nothing less I could do. DC, your rates are very low, according to what we can read. Really close to the uh, speed. Well, we're about halfway across the water. And then once we hit land, we have a little bit of a ways uh, in before we get to Manila. Uh, Roger, go ahead, uh, request uh, Omni B, Fred, and uh, oh, secure too the high gain antenna. I should have just let it be. Okay. Call 13, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, just something to think about. Uh, in about 30 minutes, we can uh, generate the pads that we have yet to send up before the uh, sleep period, so we could. Uh, support an earlier sleep period if you so desired and uh, but it will take us 30 minutes to get that stuff the other thing is anytime you're ready to copy i can read up these solo book changes over and also two pages in the flight plan okay uh, Vance, uh, we're about ready to copy the solo book changes and uh, the flight plan changes and uh, whatever your pads are ready we'll take those and uh, as far as doing the sleep period that's fine we'll, we'll if we don't go to sleep right away we'll use it to uh, get out some of our litter or uh, maps and study them. Okay, 
Okay, okay. And, hopefully uh, that's back we'll to where it was supposed to be. As as we'll see. And I'll stand by on the copy in a bit. This is Apollo Control at 32 hours 46 minutes. The crew sleep period is scheduled to begin at uh, 37 hours. You heard Vance Brand advise Jim Lovell that uh, should the crew desire, uh, we would be in a position to give them the uh, pad information that uh, they need to get before beginning the sleep period a bit early and uh, give the, uh, the astronauts themselves the option of uh, beginning their rest period earlier if they desire. primary activities remaining on the flight plan, in addition to passing up those, the uh, uh, numerical data is uh, for the crew to change out one of the lithium hydroxide canisters and uh, complete their pre-sleep checklist and uh, their evening meal. And when those things have been, uh, been completed, uh, they would be able to begin the rest period. We don't have any idea at this time precisely when the rest period would begin, that would be up to the, uh, to the crew. At the present time, Apollo 13 is 126,900 nautical miles from Earth. I'm oh, sorry. To the crew. <laughs> I accidentally skipped. I just wanted to reset something. At the present something. time, Apollo 13 is 126,900 nautical miles from Earth. The Always fiddling around with things. 4,500 feet per second. side of the page starting from the middle of the page down <coughs> uh, under everything under cycle five frames comma replace dark side or dark slide should be deleted until you get to the very bottom of the page uh, where you have acquisition misfin omni d and that should remain in. Also, uh, leave in remove window shades, which is uh, about the third line down from where you started. Everything from there on down, with the exception of remove window shades and at the bottom acquisition misfin omni D. Okay, copy. And that includes uh, in the margin to the left the uh, the DAP load that's. Uh, very start there and uh, I wonder if there's a way to tune the elevator trim setting so that zero, one zero, click is down. a smaller amount because okay, if I tried to I mean right now it has like okay, a going to page band 13. of basically a thousand six hundred feet okay. that's oscillating between okay uh, and in the left margin uh, just below but then I'd still have to click it up, click it down, click it up, click it down. Even if I did have finer control on the elevator trim. And below that, add in DAP load. It's going to oscillate uh, in a range of 1,600 feet. That's just what it's going to do. And until it settles down. One 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 one. Okay, got it. Okay, now. Let's see what the Next. peak is. It basically went down to 34,000. Uh, at about uh, 10505, there's a verb 48 
that should be moved up to 105. And uh, below that, the Berg 49 maneuver should be moved up to. And it'll top out at about 35,500. So, okay, see. that Berg 48 should be moved up to uh, 10505 and also the Berg 49. I don't want uh, to keep messing around with it. That should be moved up to 10500. I'm sorry. Both. Okay. And what that does is uh, give you more time to maneuver. Okay, next. All right. Uh, page 14. Right hand side, near the bottom under orbital science, <coughs> scratch out, verify DSE on, and also delete uh, visual target three on track, 180 plus uh, 19, and uh, cross out the pinned in D5. Okay, got it. Next, page 15, left-hand column, or left-hand side, rather, near the bottom, uh, where it says configure cameras and tape, and uh, goes down through replace dark side. Just make the comment there, solar corona is optional. Over. Okay, next page, 16. Okay, well, maybe that's a little bit better now. This is a continuation of the, the same solar corona thing. On the right-hand side of the page, uh, starting just above 10740, with verb 49 maneuver to solar corona attitude. From there on down to 10755, uh, just beneath replace dark side, all of this is in an optional category. So you just might line off. All right, got it. That and put optional solar corona. Okay, next page, 17. Okay. Uh, starting at 10800 on the left hand side. Line out, stop orb rate at orb science attitude. <coughs> at uh, line out in the left hand uh, column, the DAP load of 10101 and 11111. Going down to 10810. Add in the following. Stop orb rate at track attitude. And in parentheses, zero, comma, three, five, three, comma, zero. In the left hand, uh, okay. well, this is okay. the part the where we try and see where. Zero, eight, ten. The Philippines pops up in sight. Clearly not on the map yet. The more than 100 nautical miles away, but not too far away. Okay. Beneath that, scratch out spacecraft control dash CMC auto verify. Scratch out the verb 79, and all in parentheses after that like the uh, minus zero, zero, five, zero, seven, et cetera. And beneath that, scratch out pro to start pitch rate, in parentheses, zero, two, three, zero, slash, zero, one, eight, comma, zero. Okay. Okay, uh, looking to the right, the LEM attitude 
problem, or the uh, rather the CSM attitude will be incorrect, so you can cross that off. And beneath the picture of the moon, cross out the in parentheses 108.19 and the 0, comma 230 slash 018 comma 0. All right. On the right-hand half of the page, <coughs> cross out the orbital science block, and under that, visual target one south of track TR. And underneath that, the pinned in D two slash three slash four. All right, got it. And beneath that, cross out verb 49, maneuver to track attitude, parentheses 0, comma, 3, 5, 3, comma, 0, and H, U, comma, S, E, O. All right. Okay, the, the information beneath that, starting with configure camera, Earthshine photos, down through replace dark slide is optional. So just put in Earthshine optional as a comment there. Earthshine and optional. In the camera uh, settings uh, in the block that has F 2.8125 comma infinity, uh, cross out the 125 and put in 1 eighth one slash eight. In other words. I don't think it's refreshed the map yet. Okay, that last one was cross out the 125 and put in one eight. Is that right? That's a firm. Okay, next page. No change. Uh, go to page 19. Okay. Okay, on the right-hand side, uh, from the verb 49 maneuver, maneuver to Earthshine attitude, down through everything up to Misfin uplink, this is optional. This is Earthshine optional. All right, got it. And once again, a camera setting correction uh, up near the top of that section that we called optional, where you have bracket MIR, F0.9, comma, 125, cross out the 125 and put in 1 slash 60. In other words, 1 60th. Over. Okay. Uh, cross out the 125 and put in 1 slash 60. That's correct. And uh, further down at 109.50, where you have visual target 17, Etc. Cross out that line and cross out the pen. So many corrections. Seven. Well, things have changed. Okay. Now, move to page twenty five. Okay, at about uh, 114.10, everything under altitude set equals 60 miles should have the, the comment solar corona optional. And in that first line, that optional, where it says verb 49, maneuver to solar corona and limb bright, brightening attitude, cross out and 
limb brightening attitude. Okay. Going further down to 114, 16, cross out the OM4, DAC, 18, VHBW, limb brightening line, and the line under that, which is VRKT, comma, MIR, etc. All right. In the block where it says solar corona and limb brightening photos, cross out and limb brightening photos. Okay, and, we can uh, see land on the map now, so about 100 corona nautical option. miles away. Page 26. Still can't really see Quiet. the target. Okay, cross out the I top mean, see line on the right land. hand side of that page, which is DAC on for four seconds, 50 frame rate cover lens. And cross out. Target is more Kerbal Space Program terminology which, uh, for our destination. Percent. Page 28. Ready to go? Go ahead. Okay. On the left hand side of page 28, at the very bottom, cross out photo target 5, north, frame at F5.6, 250, infinity, etc. All of that line over to the vertical strip and cross out the pinned in E4 below that. Okay, go ahead. Okay, in the next page, 29, right hand side near the top, cross out photo, target 13 north, 
at 5.6250, etc., all of that line, and cross out beneath that the pinned in E5-6. Page 30 next, left hand side. Go ahead. At the top of 12701, uh, cross out visual target 9 on track 180 degrees plus 0.47 and cross out the pinned in E11 beneath that. Okay. Going down to 127.11, cross out verify, DSE on. Beneath that, a ways, cross out 127.14.20, start visual observations of Valmar. Uh, this is very awkward listening to all, right. all the things that, that they didn't get to do. Continue but. visual observations <laughs> and cross out stop observations. And beneath that, cross out photo target 5, 6 on track F8, comma 250, infinity 5, etc. to the end of that line. Cross out the 5.6 beneath that and the pinned in E15. Okay. Over in the margin uh, to the left of all that, make the comment, delete visual only. Sort of surprised we can't see uh, the Philippines by now. Map, uh, I didn't get that last one. You can see how okay, clear uh, it is on the map. On page but 30 on the left hand guess side. still 70 uh, nautical miles in the away. Mar uh, on the margin at the left where you have times. It's a bit of a hazy day, I guess. Beneath the 127.10, the following delete visual only. That's only a comment. Okay. All right. Okay, going to page 34. Okay. Uh, about on the left-hand side, about almost halfway down, beneath the verb 49 maneuver to topo target 54A, Make the comment, target 54A is optional. All right, got it. And uh, next, page 35 on the right-hand side. Um, everything from spacecraft control, CMC auto verify, on down should be uh, given the comment zodiacal light photos optional Page 36 on the left hand side. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, first to comment uh, in the middle of the page is where the z zodiacal light stuff ends, just under uh, verb 48. 
And then if you'll go down to the bottom of the page, cross out the line photo target 12 on track, etc., and cross out the E5 that is below that line. Okay, uh, man, uh, break in a minute. Sure. Uh, we have the uh, cryo pressure line on now. The uh, H2 has hit its uh, lower bound, so you want us to go back auto on the um, H2 heater one. Stand by. Thirteen Houston. All right, go ahead. Uh, they request that you leave that switch in the auto position until you go to bed tonight. Uh, or stand by. I mean, in the on position. I sure hope the Philippines uh, are there somewhere. I'll repeat that again. In the off position until you go to bed tonight <clears throat> for reasons that you have a 3% imbalance and uh, they'd, they'd like to uh, get that more even. So just before turning in, we'll change the switch to auto. Okay. In real life, you never have to worry about whether the land okay. is there, well, okay, unless uh, you're uh, really uh, being interesting, away, but in a game, a it's a toss-up, sometimes. I have not visited the Philippines in this game, I don't think. Now, of course, I've got photo scenery okay, in the middle man. area, but if it's misrendered for some reason, you know... If like the land class is wrong or whatever the equivalent is in X-Plane okay, 11, land class is... That, uh, for you just I second. guess there must be an equivalent in X-Plane 11. That was the term okay. for it in Flight Sim 10. But yeah, uh, it could just be classified as all water and then there's nothing there. I think I see an island. I see some land over there though, now. Apollo 13, Houston. Okay, man, I'm ready to continue. Alright, go ahead. Okay, uh, new subject. I'd like to break in to say that request you reinitialize the PTT, uh, PTC. For some reason, it's gone up to 18 degrees in pitch, and y'all both, we don't quite understand this. All we can think well, of is. Uh, I'll start descending. Start it again. Over. Okay, we'll go back. About time okay, to get uh, some air in here. We are at the the end of the changes in the solo book, and I have two pages of changes in the flight plan. Those are pages 3-122 and 3-125. While you're looking that up, we'll put Ken on to answer your question. Okay, I'll start. Let me start back uh, reinitializing PTC here. Okay. Okay, Vance, I'm on uh, 3122 the flight plan. Okay. Okay, about. Uh, oh, suddenly clouds. At Time one five six fifty. Oh, where did the land go? The right. Oh, I think well, it got cloudier, right and now it's harder to see the line. Lines. Great. Which states uh, visual target one six south one eight zero plus one. Still 11. on real world weather. Cassandi F fifteen. Request you cross out that line. Okay, we're crossing. That's all on 3-122. Next change is 3-125. Okay, Vance, I'm ready to continue. Okay, starting from the top of the I'm at 30,000 feet and there's these clouds. Cross out the first Eesh. five lines, which are set up camera for contamination and uh, 
photography, Beetlejuice, CM4, slash EL, slash 80, etc. I always figured that star Bank couldn't possibly T, be called Beetlejuice, but I guess. Window shades. I guess it is. I've got a cross. Okay, then jump down to just about uh, 15928. Cross out. Maneuver to contamination field photography attitude and all other lines below that through enable thrusters A3, comma C4, comma B3, etc. Okay, so we start uh, with maneuver to contamination field photography and we uh, cross out everything uh, down to and including enable thrusters A3, C4, B3, D4. That's correct, and those are all of the flight changes, uh, flight plan changes we have. And Ken is coming on now, and later, sometime when we get the PTC squared away, and can it's sort of see some land down there. Uh, you should read all these things back. River sure inlet of some kind. Squared away on them. Okay. Go ahead, PK. Yes, sir. I understand you have a question. Yeah, I guess I uh, I didn't understand what the, uh, the letter and the number was uh, behind some of these the photo targets. Okay. Uh, Does that refer to a page? Yes, sir. That's uh, that's the map. Uh, each fold is lettered in the uh, lower or upper right hand corner as you work your way from uh, east to west. And uh, the charts are labeled uh, D, E, and F, and uh, the solo stuff will all be the D and E, and they change with the uh, plane change one. It's the time to change the two maps. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're doing good work, eh? Well, I had a, had a good uh, prime crew that taught me all I know. Don't run out. Hey, when Fido gets a good hack on our trajectory, will you let us know? How long are you willing to wait? <laughs> He's looking at his calendar, if that means anything. All <laughs> <laughs> right. There's just the stock okay, textures I'm back here. Okay, the attitude here, and I'll wait for uh, rates to damp, and uh, you let me know when we're stable again. Okay, will do. That uh, last exchange was between Jack Swigert in the spacecraft and uh, astronaut Ken Mattingly who's been on the Capcom console along with uh, Vance Brand uh, since immediately following the television transmission this evening. Now, of course, uh, Jack Swigert replaced uh, Mattingly on the flight. That's why he said uh, he had prime crew members to right, teach him just everything. Reminder, you have to uh, disable Charlie and Delta here as uh, you've done in the past. Over. Okay, yeah, uh, I was kind of holding off on this. Let's just try and hold it here. Uh, it's not too bad as far as seeing okay. the landscape, and Fine, we don't Fine have detailed he, he landscape here along. anyway. He, he, he says he's been very concerned that you've been doing a lot of water dumping. Somewhere to our right is the city of Dagupan, D-A-G-U-P-A-N. Uh, in front of us somewhere is Urdaneta, U-R-D-A. And okay, ETA. Uh, we got, uh, quad C and D. That's basically how we're approaching okay, here. Copy, Jack. We're head towards the city of Angeles and then on to Manila. This is Apollo Control at uh, 33 hours 40 minutes. The uh, crew at the present time is still involved in uh, uh, eliminating rotational rates and attitude rates from the spacecraft in preparation for re-establishing the passive thermal control mode uh, once they get the spacecraft stable 
and they'll start it rotating at a rate of about three and three quarters revolutions per hour. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, it, it may be a while before your, your rates are settled down. Uh, we're still observing fairly high rates and dead banding of them. Okay. Erdineta should be somewhere around here. Please don't play any music that might get me in trouble. <laughs> Astronauts. Uh, not very well rendered by the stock oh, scenery, 13, but that, those roadways apparently... Oh, uh, what? Go ahead, man. The stock scenery okay, thinks of Erdineta. First one is uh, all of your P-23 Batch 2 marks have been evaluated and uh, Hey, congratulations. Looks real good. They're very happy with it. The, uh, you're down to I don't suppose the cockpit's good on this side. Oh, good. We are cleared up. Uh, aspect of it. Good times. And, uh, that's the first Still alive here. Thing to mention. The second is, uh, unless you see a need, I, I don't see any need for you to read back uh, the information we gave you on the solo book and so forth. Do you concur? Roger, I think I got it. I, I remembered a lot of it, and uh, so I think with what you gave me and what I remember, I'm pretty sure we got it right. Okay, and uh, the third item, we uh, I was just about to call that uh, your rates were stabilized to start the PTC, but it looks like uh, you're, they're jiggling around again from a dump, so uh, we'll stand We're by. right over a highway that's uh, on the map called the E1. Okay. We can sort of see it on the train down there. No secrets around here. <laughs> Say again. Hey, that's right. That there's no secrets around here. Yeah, Big Brother's watching. <laughs> uh, in in their case, in great detail. Yeah, you you really have to watch that barrel, right? By the way, we have a maneuver pad for you, a uh, flyby pad whenever you're ready to copy. Okay, stand by. Go ahead, man. Okay, maneuver pad, purpose flyby, SPS, GNN. I think I should probably should have stayed at higher altitude for longer. Oh, we're going too fast. Plus zero nine seven. Minus zero two three. Zero seven two. Two four. Three three zero eight. Plus zero two one two seven. Minus zero one four one seven. Minus zero two five four eight. One four eight. Three one six. Zero five zero. NA plus zero zero two two five 
Looking city there, Tarlac City. Minus one Interesting six name. five zero zero. Tarlac City. One one four seven seven. Three six one seven two. One six six five four. Zero two. Comments. GDC align stars are three one Arcturus and two three Denebola. R align two eight eight. Pitch align two zero five. Yaw align. Zero three four. LH none. Other. Burn is SPS docked. Lem weight. Three three four nine nine. Over. Treating the plane very well right now. One four eight three one six zero five zero N A plus zero zero two two five zero three six zero nine zero five three zero three five six three 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 five two seven one five zero. Uh, we can see an airfield NA. there. Uh, we are near NA. the city of Mabalaka. Minus two three two six. Minus one six five zero zero. One one four seven seven. Three six one seven two. One six six five. Airfield appears to be an international airport, Clark International Airport. And to the south of Mabalaka is Angeles. So there's Mabalakot under us now. I don't really know where the border between Mabalakot and Angeles are. Uh, is, correct. Uh, want to, uh, somewhere around here is Angeles. And then, if we follow the E1 right down, and so let me turn uh, left Roger, here. Uh, Delta VX is 02127. Uh, Roger. And your rates are low. Uh, looks like you can start the PTC. The next city is San Fernando. Okay, and we're... Okay, and uh, when the computer is available, request poo and accept and we'll ship you your state vector. Well, I get PTC going first, and then we'll go to... Okay. 
Okay, this does uh, look Roger, like photo scenery now. Um, I think. Hard to tell. You know, somehow, every time I do a set of P-23s, you guys uplink me a state vector. I don't think I do too well. Okay, to our left is San Fernando. Now, I could get a complex. Now, you know... You know how the Fido's are, they they like to load in their own data no matter what. So he's realigning the navigation system, but then they send up a, ma uh, well not really the matrix, but uh, an alignment but our adjustment. Vectors, they can do account the wastewater dump. <laughs> he's defending his own measurements using all the stars and everything. It, yeah, that's... <laughs> Follow 13 Houston, it's your computer again. And there was probably a gap there. Okay, go on. He did not uh, decide to continue on that subject. And as a matter of interest, I understand that, uh, that a downrange comparison between the MCC and the computer. Okay, yeah, this photo scene right now. Thousand feet. Nice and green. And that's on the last sighting, which uh, people think is pretty good. Really complex waterways to the okay. right. Anyway, you can't really see them very well. We Lots of little. Uh, on the way home would make it. This is a very complex combination of no deltas, basically, emptying into the bay. I suppose that must be Manila Bay, or yeah. You know. This is Apollo Control at 34 hours 13 minutes. At this time, the uh, crew has very little left to complete before beginning their sleep period. They still have a lithium hydroxide canister to change out. Following that, uh, we expect they'll begin their eat period. And it's uh, possible that uh, they will begin the sleep period somewhat earlier than the scheduled 37 hours in the flight plan. Our uh, latest estimate on the impact of the S4B, the Saturn third stage on the lunar surface, is that this city uh, here is Malolos. 77 hours, 57 minutes, 37 seconds, and our uh, current tracking data indicates that the impact point will be 0 degrees 56 uh, minutes north, 29 degrees 33 minutes west. Apollo 13 at this time is 130,736 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,402 feet per second. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 34 hours 42 minutes. All right, this. Uh, Our guidance and control officer. Nino Aquino International is what we want. That's where Manila really is. Quite stable in the passive thermal control mode. And the are the clouds really clearing, or are they just fooling me? It looks like they're really clearing. So you can see some of the complex canals here. Uh, we don't really get a good look on them at them uh, back there. This is much better now. Periods and periods of low crew activity. Jim Lovell. I shouldn't say canals, they're basically just uh, a delta. It's all delta, and you can see good time for the clouds to clear up. Manila, very clearly, Isthmus of Manila. Particularly sleepy at the time. They finished their other scheduled activities that they might review some of their lunar charts before turning in for the 10 hour rest period. At this time, Apollo 13 is 131,948 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,368 feet per second. At 34 hours, 43 minutes, this is Mission Control Houston. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, uh, 
just in, info on your PTC, Jim. It's looking very good. Uh, just excursions and pitch and yaw are very low. Lots of different uh, suburbs okay, of Manila and, uh, here. Valenzuela okay, is okay, the one closest uh, to us, right in front, front of us. Yeah. They are, no, a little okay. bit to our right here is Valenzuela. This stuff here. It's not like all this stuff has clear borders. So, lots of names on the map now. What's interesting is how central the airport is to the city. Pacified now. Compared to uh, most other places where past, uh, comments, uh, on they the set them aside. I mean, it's so not forth, and, uh, he hadn't seen right any in downtown, but or anything, and he was pretty happy. it's fairly close. Okay, I just wondered if uh, we're going to need any more mid course. Uh, we're flying basically, well... A little bit further is the downtown area of Manila, from the look of it. Uh, he says, seriously, it's uh, looking... All of this stuff. Uh, probably like you won't have any more. We should descend more. Hey, that's real fine. Uh, Fido's never guarantee anything, however. Fido's never guarantee anything. You can see the airport yeah, now. Right. And not very far away from the city. Now it's getting a bit hesitant. I bet it's loaded some airliners at the airport or something. Looking real uh, good, I think. Uh, to be conservative, people would like the new to video card is doing well here. I don't think uh, the, the GTX 970 could keep up this frame rate with all these buildings. If there's no, uh, Even though these are all auto gen, three, of course. Looks like there's a good chance that there will not be. Why they might want to move the LEM familiarization up from 58 to 55 hours over. Familiarization, uh, all fam we stuff. Want to do this? It's uh, just being talked about, so this is just information for you. Okay, this is beginning to sound like a uh, film that we ran not too long ago. I don't think it'll be a very big deal. This seems like more of a business district. This is Apollo Control at 35 hours, 46 minutes. 
The uh, flight dynamics officer has just recomputed a new uh, impact point for the S-4B based on later uh, tracking data. Uh, the current figures uh, predict that the S-4B will impact the moon at a ground elapsed time Very of prominent 77 mountain hours, right there that we can see in front of us. Seconds. I wonder which one that is. And Looking the, around, there's uh, the a whole range to, to be the two right. Degrees, 35 minutes south. But that one right in front of us is intriguing. And 28 degrees, 31 minutes west. Uh, these continue to be preliminary figures, and we expect that uh, there is a good chance they will be updated as we get uh, further tracking data on the S-4B. At the present time, Apollo 13 is 134,624 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,292 feet per second. Maybe descending a little bit quickly here. Uh, hacking into your pre-sleep checklist yet? And word hacking oh, takes yeah. on all sorts of different yeah, meanings here. Uh, meeting and, uh, cleaning up a bit afterwards. Uh, Jim's uh, going around collecting uh, debris off of all the uh, inlet hoses. And I guess uh, you might say we're kind of thinking about uh, getting ready to go to sleep. Well, I hope you had a good meal. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Oh, no. No music, please. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are really living it up up there. Okay, All gear down. Food. I, I didn't say drink. It is pretty nice. Not bad at all. All right, uh, time to get back into the cockpit, I think. It's uh, PTC, we're in. It's a pretty, uh, pretty nice merry-go-round, uh, advance. Uh, every, uh... Oh, I went a little too minutes, far. Uh, ultimately, I uh, get to look at the Earth and uh, the moon. Well, you couldn't ask for anything more than that. Just saw it, uh... Isn't so fast. Now it's a uh, lot better. Remember from uh, eight. Oh wow! Eight it's it's badly trimmed. Get to look at either one. That's right. They were tumbling uh, about another axis, weren't they? Yep. Yeah, it's pretty cloudy. It's still uh, badly trimmed. Down there tonight, uh, but the only. Uh, Land, I can see again is a portion of Australia. Being like a space and, uh, shuttle kind of trajectory here. And looks like a part of China. Just about clouds uh, covering everything else. Nobody gonna uh, start screaming sink rate at clearly me? Clearly, with uh, the naked eye, or do you have to uh, look through a glass? Uh, I can see Australia with a naked eye and uh, the China land mass, but I uh, it took the monocular to pull out the uh, Korean Peninsula. How about the moon? Uh, is it looking very big yet? Okay. No, not, uh, not really. Do not Bigger, try that uh, if I'm actually on board the airliner, please, no. other pilots. I understand that uh, they're estimating your... No, frankly, I think I've had an approach like that once. <laughs> At least it seemed that way. 62 miles. Well, that's not bad. That's supposed to be just right. Yeah. All right, well, we used all that runway. Well, we made it. Jack. Takes the flaps a while to actually extend and retract, okay, of course. Okay, we're the pre-sleep checklist now. Uh, as far as the crew status reports as over there. medication goes, we've had no medication. And we're all feeling really good. 
giving you the onboard readout. Jim is chlorinating the potable water now. I'm ready for an e-memory dump whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there as they arrange that e-memory dump. And we have arrived in Manila. Very nice view. Thankfully the clouds cleared up right at the end there. And next time I'm going to fly to Taipei and a plane that's really hard to fly. At least in my experiences in X-Plane 11 I have not been fond of the F-4 Phantom. Uh, it's been really tough to fly so we'll see how I do. Um, it's really finicky, especially at low speeds. So anyway, with that and with this arrival, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.